everyone. Thanks for checking out my channel. Um, today I'm starting a new, uh, hopefully a series of foraging videos. Um, since spring is in full bloom here in Texas, um, all my favorite forageables are popping up. And one of my favorite ones is one called plantain. Now there's over a hundred uh, species of plantain. Um, and I don't really know the subspecies of them, but I do know what the one here looks like. Um, <laughs> uh, a few years ago, my husband and I got into foraging really big and um, making our own medicines. And um, of course, I'm going to pop in a disclaimer at the beginning of the video saying that I'm not a doctor, don't sue me, do it at your own risk kind of thing. Um, because you have to, I guess. And, uh, and so anyway, this one is plantain right here. And as you can see, it has little fuzzy hairs all over the shoots and the leaves. And what's great about this plant is, um, one, it's just used for almost every common ailment. Um, from stomach upset, um, ulcers, uh, insight, insect uh, bites, sunburn, um, stings. Um, it's been used as a smokable herb to help with clearing out phlegm from your lungs. Um, and I'll probably do another video on uh, different legal smok smokable herbs that you can use for um, for different ailments and stuff like that. Um, again, it's like it's not to like cure asthma or anything. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to cure somebody else's asthma. I just find medicinal plants extremely interesting and edible plants very interesting. So I thought I'd share with you guys. Um, so yeah, you can take the leaves, and if you have an insect bite, um, like here we have. Uh, of course, wasps, bees, uh, fire ants, chiggers, fleas, um, and that's just to name the most common ones of what we deal with all summer long, and especially chigger and fire ant bites. So you just crush it up, even just like that. You can add some water or you don't have to. Um, water just like makes it um, uh, move around a little bit easier. And you can just rub it straight onto your skin where the um, where the bite is or the sunburn or whatever. And uh, that's the quickest way to do it. And it'll relieve it immediately. Um, what I usually do is I'll get uh, rubbing alcohol. And it's like, I think it's like 75 or 80% rubbing alcohol. And I'll take all the, the leaves and... I mean, really, you can just take the whole top of the plant, um, but we usually end up eating the little, the little buds, these little guys, uh, when they're really young. Um, but if they're not, then you can just throw them in your alcohol, and um, now you can use, obviously, rubbing alcohol is for topical on the skin. You can use drinking alcohol and as a tincture that you can drink for the benefits and use it on the skin. Do not drink rubbing alcohol. It will kill you or make you very, very sick. Um, I just want to make that distinction there. Um, so yeah, you just like crush them up. Um, we use mortar and pestle or just chop them up, rub them in your hands, throw them in the alcohol and let it sit for like a week or two. Um, I mean, you can leave it in there or you can strain it out. It really doesn't matter. Um, either way, you're going to get the benefits of it. And that we did one, like a jar about this big, lasted us about two years. And um, so, yeah, it is amazing. It's uh, my daughter calls it just um, the no itch medicine because it's the only thing that um, that stops all of her itches like immediately. And it works like even just for like irritated skin in general. Um, she 
when she was going through growth spurts, her skin would start itching, and we would put it on there, and it would start soothing her her itches. And uh, but when you have the younger leaves like this, so I was just going to show you like that one's kind of wilty. Um, but when you have like these uh, younger leaves like this one. Um, you can toss them in salads. These are really soft. They do have those little hairs on them. So if you have a weird thing, not weird thing, if you have a thing about different textures, um, uh, you know, you, it may not be good to you. Um, but you can turn this, uh, um, put this with salad greens, or you can take the leaves and the little buds when they're not too seeded. Like, this is a little old, I think, but let me see if there's one in here. <clears throat> well, it looks like all these are pretty old. Um, I'll try and find a really young one and show you guys, but you can chop those off and, um, saute them in like butter and garlic and they're really really good and um, the leaf um, it kind of cooks down like spinach you know and so I don't know it's good it's um, you can also juice it because it has a ton of like vitamin C and beneficial minerals um, but obviously cooking destroys a lot of those minerals so you can uh, juice them and then throw them in a smoothie, although they do have a very green taste, so if you're not like a big fan of uh, wheatgrass um, and other green juices like that, it's hot, um, then you probably won't like the juice from plantain, but if you like wheatgrass, you want to throw it, it's like super health food. Um, and uh, let's see, here's, I wanted to show you guys, here's what the mature plant looks like. Now when foraging, I usually don't pick up, like I don't pull a whole plant out of the ground, and it's kind of, <laughs> just because it's bad form, because there are so many plants out there that, um, are losing their space, they're being eradicated, so, um, the kind of rule of thumb when it comes to foraging is take what you need and leave the rest. I'm in my backyard and this stuff grows everywhere. Like, I want to take y'all on a little like walking tour just so you can see like different sizes and like what they look like up close. Um, because it is a lot harder to tell to tell what a plantain looks like when it's not at this stage. <laughs> you know, it's like um, when it's like the size of my head, you know, it's it's not quite the size of my head. But when it's this big, um, you know, it's pretty easy to spot. When it's, you know, a couple tiny leaves on the ground, it's a little harder at first. And as you become more familiar with it, um, you'll be able to spot it from a mile away. And um, so, yeah, I did pull these out of the ground. But if you're foraging, especially out in, like, parkways or I mean you cannot forage in it's in a state park in Texas it's against the law and you will get fined and possibly arrested so don't forage in state parks <laughs> in Texas I don't know what the rules are for national parks or for state parks outside of Texas but um, yeah big no-no there uh, public parks are fine um, private land is fine with the owner's um, permission. Um, so yeah, just want to let you guys know. Um, don't want anybody to get fined or arrested. Um, there's a couple links I'm going to put down below. Um, one guy has a foraging um, website. He's based out of Houston. His name is Merriweather. And he has... I love his, um, his website. It's... Uh, it's a little, um, a little outdated, but, you know, it's, it's informational and that's all it needs to be. Um, and anyway, he has a lot more information about all these forageable plants in, in Texas, but plantains on there. 
Um, then I'm also going to link another site, which I can't remember the name of the website at the moment, but um, she, or they, put, um, put together like an extensive list of uh, uses and benefits, and then they also have recipes on how to make the tea, the salve, ooh, a little spider, um, salves, uh, tinctures, I think there's an ointment on there, I don't even remember, but they have a lot on there, and, which is great, because then I don't have to do anything, I'll just put the link and not have to bring up all these recipes or whatever, um, but again, it's like, even though I don't know of anybody having a reaction to this kind of stuff, like, always be careful with anything, anything that you're not familiar with, like, plant-wise, um, just because you never know how you'll react until you, until you're there, um, but, yeah, then obviously you can make a tea out of the leaves, um, you can dry the leaves, or you can use them fresh, um, and yeah, that's, oh, that's right, I wanted to mention the magical properties, <laughs> duh, um, <laughs> like, I know I'm forgetting something, um, so yeah, when it comes to forageable plants, because they're not necessarily the most mainstream plants to where there would be a lot of information out there about its magical properties, um, I really encourage people to uh, sit down and really connect with the plant that you're foraging because you're going to resonate with it differently than anybody else will. Um, how I feel about plantain may be completely different to how you feel. And, I mean, that's good no matter what plant it is. Um, you know, don't take anybody else's uh, word for what something... Uh, the magical association to a plant should be for you because, you know, that may be totally off um, what you feel for it. So uh, there's um, a book I wanted to recommend. Um, it's called Dandelion Hunter Foraging the Urban Wilderness, I think is what it's called. But it is Dandelion Hunter. I think it's Foraging the Urban Wilderness. But the lady who wrote it is... Um, She's badass. Uh, her name is Rebecca Lerner. And um, I first came across her when I was beginning foraging because she's a forager and she's also pagan and uh, a Reiki, what is it, Master Reiki teacher and healer? Or a healer, I don't know if she teaches. Um, and, but she um, is really close with like. Uh, plant spirit medicine and um, just connecting intuitively with with plants and I mean, she, her book is really great and um, and she lives I think she's in Portland um, but yeah I mean it's a really easy read it's it's not very long but it's informative and she in the book she uh, uh, talks about she was doing like a, a group circle um, and they were offered a plant and they weren't told what plant it was and that each person then you know sat in the circle and meditated off and, and tried to connect with the spirit of the plant and um, she writes about what she experienced with it and then coming to find out what the plant was it was like super I, I'm not going to tell you I'm not going to like ruin the book or whatever um, but it was extremely eye opening and like it was just like a really cool moment and I don't know it's just you know spend time with the plants and I guess I'm not going to tell you like magical properties for this because because what I use it for I've been using this for oh uh, I guess like five or six years and um you know my connection with it and what it uh manifests and resonates with me it may be totally different so I don't want to and I don't want to give you like 
I don't want to put stuff into your head. I want you to figure it out, like, for your own, you know? And, um, and because if you, if you sit with something, you'll, you will hear, like, what needs to come through, you know? And, um, you just gotta take the time and, and sit and have quiet and, and let it open, open itself up to you and you be open to it and then it'll all like sync up and it'll be, it'll be great. <laughs> all right. Um, anyway, so yeah, I think that's all that I was going to talk about with that. Let me think. I guess that's that's all I'm hmm well I guess I'm gonna just take you around to take a little look see here's my backyard so pretty alrighty oh <laughs> Lion King pillow <laughs> alrighty let's see and get to the big patch of it over here so, right down here, I mean, I'm sure you'll start seeing it all. Here's a little patch, and these are the little babies. And those are the ones that are really, like, all this, that'd be great to cook up. You know, if you, if you wanted to try it, look, even right here. Let me see, I can't even see it. Look how tiny those are. Those are the softest ones that are really good for eating. Uh, yeah, there we go. But you can see, I mean, look, it's just like a huge patch. Like all this area is covered. We're not even talking about like my front yard. My front yard is completely covered. But I need to come out here and like pick a ton of it because. I think it's biannual, so it'll pop up in fall and spring, depending on where you are. And then at least comes up in spring, which is great because then you can make all the medicine you need for all the insect bites you're going to get in summer. <laughs> and then here's the bigger patches. Can you even see that? Yeah. It's so bright in the glare on my camera. It's just like, I can't see anything. So this is a farm behind our house. And we have like goats and donkeys and a little like cow dog. Or I guess a goat dog. That comes around and they like eat out of your hand. It's so cool. But I put a watermelon over here and they've been munching on it. But this morning, like, there's tons of roadrunners around our area. I was hoping I would catch one on, on video. And I don't think so. I was going to, I was trying to film this same foraging video um, yesterday or the day before. And it started raining, so I had to, like, stop or whatever. But right when it um, started raining and I, <laughs> I had just put away my camera, all these roadrunners were back here just like jumping across. I was like, oh man, I wish I had gotten that. But, but yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it and, and I'll be posting more. There's like so much stuff to, to talk about and um, just looking around, I had to stop myself from pointing out other things just so I don't ruin it and can make more videos about it later on. So, alright. Many blessings. See you guys later. Bye.